Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A man is hurt in a shooting on the city's east side. We'll have details from police as they look for those responsible. And coming up, the latest numbers on the coronavirus outbreak here in the United States. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the details. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 80 degrees, but there's rain in our future. We're going to talk to Mike about that in just a bit. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, July 22nd. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us this morning. And yeah, looking forward to that rain. It got a little hot in the afternoon. Yesterday. 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 Mm -hmm. And I was on the lookout for some of those showers yesterday, Mike, but it looks like they mostly yeah. stayed to the east of us. Remember at this time yesterday, mm -hmm. we were looking at that disturbance moving on in here and there was a lot of rain off to the east. We had a couple of showers around that thing just put on the brakes and went almost straight north. Did it? Around here. So yeah, we got the, uh, you know, nothing basically from it. Uh, there may be a couple of showers, you know, just the one or two of them out there today. Not a great chance of rain. One thing you noticed this morning, though, is it is. Uh, did you all notice it was more humid this morning? When yeah. it was I felt outside? that most definitely. We're at 80 right now, 78 Valverde, mid 70s Hill Country, and these numbers are definitely up. Yesterday we were down around 71, 70 for a dew point temperature. Now it's back up to 74, 76 in Holotus. So yeah, that's uh, that's definitely kind of tropical sort of uh, humidity that's out there as of right now. Mold uh, did go up substantially yesterday up to 1480 and throughout the rest of today, 89 degrees at noon, 96 for a high temperature today. Again, a shower or two is possible, although not very likely. Now with the humidity, which is not going to be dropping down all that much, that 96 is going to be feeling a lot hotter than that. And the rain can't come soon enough because it's going to get a little bit hotter each and every day. Tomorrow, Friday, more humidity out there. And then we'll talk about uh, perhaps a rainy weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now this Wednesday morning. Getting early jump on the commute. The one, the only Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone at home and those hoping to head home soon from the overnight shift. Now, right now, things look pretty good if you're here inside 1604 traveling about. However, if you're northbound on 35, planning on heading back, heading back over towards uh, New Braunfels, you may encounter a little bit of a delay. We're seeing some backups out there due to some construction at uh, 11 o FM 1102. Now, 21 and Grayson looking pretty good in 1604 Culebra. No issues there. And you can see 35 Benzingham and North and Southbound Rains lanes still running smoothly. 1604 Tradesman right now, no problems there. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. This morning, police still looking for a suspect in an east side shooting. It happened at the corner of Polaris and Crockett last night. Officers say two men were arguing when one of them shot a man in the leg. That man was taken to the hospital. The suspect remains on the run. Number of people in the intensive care unit for COVID-19 symptoms continues to go up. And for a look at the latest numbers here in Bear County, our Sarah Costa joins us in the studio. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, some good news. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the number of people in ICU beds is starting to slow down over the last couple of weeks. However, as they, they track those numbers through hospital admissions, but he warns that cases continue to peak and we need to do everything possible to keep that number from rising. This morning, 1,166 people are in the hospital, 435 are in the ICU and 288 are on ventilators. We have 10% of staff beds available. When taking a look at the total number of COVID-19 cases, Bear County saw more than 500 more cases for a total of 31,867. 12 more deaths were also reported for a total of 274 people dying from the virus. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. One local bar owner is speaking out after the TABC determined their establishment was in violation of social distancing guidelines. Agents found that the bar, the burn house, did temperature checks and instructed patrons to wear masks. However, undercover footage showed some people without masks and some dancing in close proximity of each other. The club was shut down days before Governor Greg Abbott issued an order to reclose bars across Texas due to the pandemic. Because of that order, the case against Burnhouse was dismissed. The uncertainty that that, you know, government officials are 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 giving the, the public, not just the industry or the bar industry, but the entire public is needs to be unified some way, somehow. Uh, and, you know, rather than blaming the bar industry, be real about it and say, we just don't know what the hell's going on anymore. And we're trying to we're trying to figure it out. 
And the owner of the burn house says after losing some of their very own to the virus in the industry, he understands that protocols need to be in place. He also says he hopes one day state officials and the bar industry can compromise on a way for them to stay open. It is first coronavirus briefing since April. President Donald Trump with an about face on the severity of the pandemic. This as a new report from the CDC is showing the number of infections in the U.S. is likely much higher than first reported. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, the latest numbers on coronavirus continue to show a steady surge. Hospitalizations are up in 40 states. The South looking like the Northeast back in April. In California, the number of confirmed cases is likely to surpass New York. And now an alarming new report from the CDC says the number of people infected in the first months of the pandemic could be 10 times higher than previously predicted. Dr. Anthony Fauci on CNN pushing for continued safety guidelines. Universal wearing of masks, close the bars, stay physically distant, wash your hands. The really fundamental things, it's not rocket science. Florida, another U.S. hotspot where hospitals are being pushed beyond capacity. Baptist Health in Miami has just one ICU bed left. Every day it's coming into more patients and they're very sick. Meanwhile, at the White House in his first coronavirus briefing since April, you, President much. Trump, who has downplayed the virus for weeks, now acknowledging the severity of the pandemic. It will probably, unfortunately, get worse before it gets better. While his likely opponent in November, Joe Biden, hitting Trump hard. He's basically waved the white flag. He said, I'm not responsible. I don't have to do anything. Dr. Anthony Fauci says he was not invited to Trump's briefing and hasn't spoken to the president since last week. Fauci also brushed off the president's recent remarks when he called Fauci an alarmist. I consider myself more a realist than an alarmist. Now, all of this is taking place while the debate to reopen schools rages on. In Florida, some parents and teachers are suing the governor to keep campuses closed, while here in D.C., some of the school districts are joining others around the country in switching to all virtual learning. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. Time check, 437, 80 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a first look at a one-on-one -on -one interview with three NBA stars talking about social justice. And next, more details on the death of a U.S. military service member in Syria. And taking a look outside with live cam, it was a humid start to the day here on Wednesday, but uh, expecting some rain today and into the weekend. We're going to check in with Mike to see exactly when, when we get back. In your morning headlines, a U.S. service member has died in Syria. According to the military, the American fighter was assigned to the Combined Joint Task Force for Operation Inherent Resolve. U.S.-led coalition is fighting ISIS in Syria. They have not released the service member's name, but initial reports indicate the death was not due to enemy contact. The military continues to investigate. In Houston, firefighters were called to the Chinese consulate late last night after reports of smoke. Houston's fire chief says the fire was contained and did not appear to damage the building. Investigators say documents were being burned in trash cans in the courtyard of the consulate. Videos shared by a viewer who lives next to the consulate show several open bins and containers with flames coming out of them. People could be seen throwing things into those bins. A Houston police source says that the consulate and a nearby compound where many employees of the consulate live are being evicted on Friday. U.S. Army says the body of a Fort Hood soldier was found near the Texas Army post. That marks the third time in a month that a Fort Hood soldier's body has been discovered. Fort Hood officials say that 26-year-old Private Mehor Morta was found unresponsive July 17th in the vicinity of Stillhouse Hollow Lake. That's a reservoir located in Bell County and managed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The Bear County Sheriff's, rather Bell County Sheriff's Department is investigating the incident and did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Officials have not said whether the death is considered suspicious. And time now is 442 and 80 degrees for now. Still ahead, the pandemic has halted most music festivals, but the iHeart Radio Music Festival is still happening. I'll have a preview and tell you when you can watch it. Plus, what local UT health doctors want expecting mothers to know as the number of COVID-19 cases continues to increase.
Three of the biggest names in the NBA are launching a major social justice effort. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, we sit down with three NBA superstars. What goes on in the bubble that we don't see? Carmelo Anthony, Chris Paul, and Dwayne Wade talking NBA and their collaboration on the Social Change Fund. Um, I think right now, uh, with everything that has happened since George Floyd in the last two months, um, we, have, we have even more responsibility now to make sure that we're making sure that our communities are taken care of. Coming up at 7 a.m., what they're saying about those first scrimmages and life inside the bubble. All we know is cornhole and fishing. Somebody might catch you the same fish, too. <laughs> Throwing it right back. That's funny. <laughs> hey, but look, all jokes aside, where, where can you go? Like, how can you even sneak out? I ain't trying to be funny. I'm being dead serious. It's like four knocks down here. Yeah. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. UT Health doctors have a message for inspectant mothers as the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise. Hospital doctors say they're seeing about 15 to 20 percent of their pregnant patients test positive for COVID-19. Of that, about 85 percent are asymptomatic. Let's go ahead and check in with Sarah Costa with what that means for new and expectant moms. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, I know there's a lot of expecting mothers out there who are nervous, but it's why doctors are taking all precautions. We're told that as soon as pregnant women arrive to deliver at the hospital, they are tested for COVID-19 and are presumed positive as soon as they check in. Doctors say mothers who are positive are then consulted about whether or not their babies will be taken away from them after they deliver as a precaution. One mother who was positive when she delivered says it was scary, but she is urging other moms to stay calm. Corona took everything that we look forward to, like the baby showers, uh, the family coming to the baby. I um, just have a positive outcome, um, a positive mind, and a strong, and make sure you have a strong support system. If you have a newborn at home or you're late in your pregnancy, be careful of who's around you. Make sure that nobody's sick uh, who doesn't need to be around your baby. Two percent, Mark and Stephanie. All right, Sarah. Thank you. There can be a lot of complications with pregnancy, but with COVID-19, that's very scary. 447, 80 degrees. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Stephanie. As we take a look, still no accidents out there. However, we do have a little bit of construction. So let's. are going to start off here. This is uh, 1604 Oakland Avenue. No issues there. But as we move on, you can see I-10 La Cantera. We have some uh, construction that continues on out through Burning Stage Road. And also, this is northbound 35 at FM 1102. And that's what we talked about earlier. Lots of construction. And periodically, you'll see just walls of red from all the taillights as uh, they move the equipment back and forth across the highway there. Right now, it seems to be flowing at a decent pace. So hopefully, you don't have to venture that far outside of San Antonio this morning. That's true. As they say in Texas, another purdy picture. Yeah, I mean, we've had beautiful sunsets mm -hmm. recently. Um, I went for a little walk very briefly around the block yesterday, and it was pretty toasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. yeah you work yeah. up a sweat? And, uh, yeah, it just, I didn't even try to work up a sweat, but it's just being outside like that. So if you are going to be outside, especially in the next couple of days, including today, lots of water because, uh, Temperatures are going to be up about normal, but you know, which is mid 90s, mid and upper 90s. And we are going to have some humidity sticking around here the next few afternoons. So that rain can't come soon enough. All right, we've got our morning clouds hanging around 80 in town. Same thing at Lotus 79 Canyon Lake. Temperatures are up a couple of degrees from uh, yesterday in the past couple of days. And these numbers are noticeably up. Dew points are in the mid 70s right now on average. Yesterday it was basically low 70s and a lot of 60s. And also, uh, going back to temperatures, remember yesterday we hardly had any 80s on the map at all yesterday, so these numbers are uh, are definitely up a little bit. Now, as far as uh, heat index, yep, it feels like 85 degrees right now. We've got that, and we're going to be dealing with heat indices the next couple of days, well up into the low hundreds. So we're going to keep dew points up in the afternoon hours, up in the upper 60s and low 70s, uh, especially tomorrow and Friday. So just get ready. Then, with the higher humidity over the weekend, at least that's going to feed some uh, some showers around here and a couple of thunderstorms. So here's the computer model for today. This is a short term. Yes, there could be one 
one or two showers trying to pop up around here. I wouldn't count on it at all. Uh, you know, computer models kind of um, sometimes err just on the side of, okay, there may be a shower or two around. And then tomorrow, uh, there's basically nothing going to be going on as far as any rain chances. All right, off to the, first of all, you know, we we're talking off the top of the show, this uh, rain system yesterday that looked like it was going to be moving on in here, and this thing decided to move straight up to the north, and so that's why we basically got nothing as far as any rain. We are still looking at this blob, and I say that as far as a blob, it is not organized at all. There is a chance that this low could become a little bit better organized as it works its way across the Gulf of Mexico because water temperatures, I mean, it, it, all the ingredients are there for it to perhaps strengthen, but it's just not looking like it's going to as of right now. Jumping ahead into Friday and Saturday, uh, it looks like also timing is starting to move back just a little bit. Remember a couple of days ago, it looked like this thing was going to be in here Friday, Friday night, Saturday, and then moving on out. Well, now it's going to be probably late Friday into Saturday throughout the day on Saturday. And then also the other thing, it looks like maybe the center of this is going to be a little bit further to the south, but we still have the chance for some heavy rain around here. And it's going to be now Saturday into Sunday, most of the day on Sunday, and probably even some lingering showers around here on Monday. And could see as of right now, kind of widespread one, three inches, maybe some heavier downpours on top of that. So that's kind of best case scenario as of right now. 89 degrees today at noon, probably cloudy skies. High temperature today, 96, just about normal, maybe a little bit above that, but it is going to feel hotter than with the uh, humidity out there. Maybe a shower wouldn't count on a shower today. Pretty much almost take any rain chance out of the picture tomorrow. A shower or two is possible on Friday, but it is going to be hot and those numbers may be a little bit on the conservative side of those 97s. It's going to be pretty hot and humid the next couple of days. And then we're still looking at uh, some potentially some uh, good widespread and at times heavy rain over the weekend. Oh, we were kind of speculating about this as we were chatting early Monday morning and now here we are midweek and you're still feeling pretty confident. It's still looking good. I mean, a lot of computer models. I mean, everything is still the consistency now as far as, you know, timing that slowed just a little bit, but as far as this thing moving on in here, it's still looking like it. All right, we can wait for the weekend. Yes, we can. We're enthusiastic. Thank you, Mike. 452, 80 degrees. And coming up next, the digital version of San Diego Comic-Con kicks off today. And even some of the biggest stars are bummed that it can't be in person this year. Lotto players, we have your numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, two, Fireball, one. Daily four number, zero, two, six, nine, Fireball, one. Cash five, one, two, four, five, 17. And your Mega Millions, 14, 25, 26, 41, 43. Mega Ball, 15, Mega Plier, three. Good luck. About five till the online version of San Diego's Comic Con starts today and Grey's Anatomy is taking on the coronavirus. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. San Diego Comic Con kicks off today the at home version since the massive in person pop culture festival had to pivot because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nosferatu star Zachary Quinto is a Comic Con veteran and he tells me he's bummed. You won't get to do a panel on stage in front of thousands of people this year. You know, there's something really electric about um, those those giant convention halls and people's energy and excitement, enthusiasm and questions. But he will be part of a virtual panel on Saturday. Other highlights include a panel Friday with Charlize Theron and the cast of the upcoming Bill and Ted sequel on Saturday. Perhaps it's no surprise, but the TV doctors on Grey's Anatomy are going to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic during a panel at Emmys.com. Executive producer Krista Vernoff said, quote, there's no way to be a long running medical show and not do the medical story of our lifetimes. Season 17 of Grey's is expected to debut this fall, but Vernoff says they haven't started shooting yet. The pandemic has stopped most music festivals from happening, but the iHeartRadio Music Festival is a go. This year's lineup featuring K-pop sensation BTS, Miley Cyrus, Migos, Thomas Rhett, and more. It'll be recorded live on stages in LA and Nashville, broadcast on The CW in late September. And this long-running game show host celebrates his 80th birthday today. If you answered, who is Alex Trebek, you're right while superstar singer Selena Gomez is 28. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 80 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour as America gets ready to go back to school. One area district says more than 80% of parents want their students to learn in person. Ready to have your Amazon packages delivered by robot? Details on the company's robot expansion plan. Just ahead in your morning tech bite. Live from Chase at 12, 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It is looking like the Republican runoff of Congressional District 23 here in Texas is not quite over yet. We'll take a look at the very latest results. Plus, how some parents are still urging some school districts to provide in-person learning despite pandemic concerns. We made it to midweek and we'll get an update on those rain chances for the weekend. And here's some good news. Mike is sticking with his forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is July 22nd. Thanks for starting your morning with us. And yeah, that is good news, um, especially towards the end of the week. We love to hear that. Well, so the question is, Mike, how much, when, and is this going to be a multi-day event? Uh, a couple of days, at least. And the one thing that has changed, now most uh, computer models going in toward the weekend are still very consistent as far as the system moving on in here. The timing has slowed down just a little bit. What had looked like it was going to be um, probably Friday into Saturday, now it's going to be Saturday into Sunday. But we're still looking at uh, a few inches of rain. We'll talk more about that coming up. First, First of all, first things first, it is uh, it's a lot warmer and more humid out there this morning. 80 right now in town, uh, mid 70s in portions of the hill country. Dew point is up to 74. I think back to yesterday, it was down about 70, and that four degrees makes a whole lot of difference. You're definitely going to notice it when you step outside this morning. And the aquifer did continue its uh, decline 10 day average, 655.5. And hopefully, the aquifer gets good recharge this weekend. Mold is definitely on the high side. And again, temperatures around the area are up actually a couple of degrees compared to this time yesterday. We did uh, dip down to 76 yesterday morning. I don't think we're going to be getting down quite that low this morning. And again, these numbers are up about uh, three, four degrees or so. 76 for a heat index right now and hello to 75 Stinson. That's really darn humid air. And so yes, a heat index of 85 in town, 81 in Pleasanton. That's the one thing we're gonna have to be putting up with for the next uh, couple of days. Today and especially tomorrow and Friday is a little bit hotter temperatures and a lot of humidity. Maybe a shower storm this afternoon. If you get one, great. I wouldn't count on it, though. Same kind of song and dance we've been going through the past few days. Hotter and a bit more humid tomorrow and Friday. Then good chance of rain. Yeah, could have some uh, heavy downpours. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything we should know about, sir? Right now, Mike, everything off to a great start with no accidents. Now we have some overnight construction, uh, but they're in the process of wrapping most of those things up. Now 37 to Jones Avenue here in the downtown area. No problems. 21 to Grayson North and Southbound Lanes also looking great. We move over to 21 and 410 up there by the airport. So far, no issues there. Marcus Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. 502 school districts in and around San Antonio all faced with an evolving pandemic and are having to adapt. Bernie ISD is one district that has allowed parents to decide if students would attend class or learn online. Our Sarah Costa joins us now with what parents there are wanting the most. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, it seems that they want their children back in the classroom for in-person learning. Doc, the superintendent of Bernie ISD, Dr. Thomas Price, says so far, 81% of parents in their district have expressed that they want their children to be doing in-person learning come this fall. Bernie ISD, which is in Kendall County, is set to begin school on August 12th. Bear County is under a health directive announced by Metro Health, which forbids schools from reopening for in-person instruction until at least after Labor Day. Harlandale ISD says it will begin distance learning on August 24th. And San Antonio ISD is set to start on August 17th. We have a list of dates on KSAT.com. And of course, when it comes back to school information, we want to help you keep informed as much as possible. That's why we've created a special back to school page that's available right now on KSAT.com. And you can find tentative start dates for school districts in the San Antonio area, as well as other important information for parents. Mark and Stephanie. And we're going to keep this conversation going, Sarah. The first day of school is just weeks away in some states, but there's no national plan to get kids back in classrooms. Schools across the country struggling to figure out the best ways to reopen and to do it safely. ABC's Karen Travers has that story. Parents and teachers are increasingly worried about how to reopen schools safely. And I'm not sure that I want my children to be the guinea pigs for that. I would prefer not to be the guinea pig. 
Um, it's really about my health. The coronavirus pandemic is forcing state and local officials to consider drastic plans for the upcoming school year. Mandatory mask wearing, limited extracurricular activities, no chorus or sports, reducing class size to allow social distancing and using a hybrid model, dividing classes, groups of students rotating between in-school learning and at-home distance learning. School districts in Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco and Houston announcing they will all begin the school year online. The American Academy of Pediatrics says kids should be physically in class, pointing to the major health, social and educational benefits. Doctors and public health officials are very worried about how kids can transmit the coronavirus. Maybe they have less severe outcomes, but when it comes to transmission, kids are important vectors because they'll infect their parents or in turn infect grandparents. Peg Alessi from Northern Virginia has been a teacher for 25 years. She's grappling with what is the right approach for her and her students. It saddens me and, and angers me at the same time because I've never had to be put in that situation where my family comes second because it's my family coming second. Another big issue, one that educators told us is not getting enough attention. What happens if a teacher or student tests positive? Jeff Bowlby is a teacher in the Philadelphia suburbs. His wife, a friend of mine for nearly 30 years, is also a teacher. They have three young children. We're going to be sending my son into a classroom of, of 20 kids, my daughter into a classroom of 20 kids. My wife's going to teach 20 kids and I'm going to have 100 cycling through my classroom. So, I mean, we're going to have a high amount of exposure. Jeff says he really wants to get back into the classroom. He's hearing a lot about reopening, but not the protocol if there's a COVID case in his, his wife's or his kid's classrooms. And if my son's being quarantined, are they going to then make my daughter quarantine or my wife and I going to have to be out of school for two weeks? With many school districts set to open in August, the clock is ticking for a creative, safe solution. Right now, I definitely don't feel comfortable with them going back full time. Um, but I do know that that is going to have a, a lasting effect on them. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. It was a very tight race. Now, a week later, the lead appears to be growing in a Republican runoff for Congressional District 23 here in Texas. Tony Gonzalez was ahead by seven votes ahead of Raul Reyes, but now Gonzalez's campaign says that's increased to a coincidental 23 vote margin. In a statement, his campaign says, quote, Tony's margin of victory has increased now that most counties, including all the largest counties in the district, have updated their results to reflect all votes legally cast. End quote. Gonzalez's opponent has not given up the race on Facebook. Reyes posted, quote, ballot canvassing through our 29 county district has started this week and with the deadline being Thursday, July 23rd, end quote. He also made mention of an effort for a recount fund. On the Democratic side, Gina Ortiz Jones, who won her March primary. Now, this is a race to replace Representative Wilt Hurd, who is stepping aside at the end of his term. District 23 stretches from San Antonio to El Paso. Right now it's 507, 80 degrees. And still ahead, how Major League Baseball is still letting you cheer on your favorite team, even if you can't be there in person. And the high demand is affecting consumers' wallets, especially at the grocery store. What you can expect next time you go shopping. And taking a look outside with live cam, a shot of downtown San Antonio, 80 degrees for now. We don't have the rain in that shot, but we'll see it soon. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Stay-at-home orders across the country are prompting people to eat at home more than they normally would. And now, high demand for groceries is starting to affect consumer wallets. This morning, David Sears talks about what you can expect the next time you make a trip to the store. If you feel like your grocery bill has been a little higher than normal, you're not alone. That's because the demand for food during the pandemic has gone up as people quarantine at home. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the price of meat has gone up once again. Bacon went up an astounding 8%. Beef went up almost 5%. And frozen seafood, 1% more expensive. Morning essentials like cereal, fresh veggies, and that coffee you love to make before working from home, it went up about 2%. Americans also paid more for sweets and snacks like cupcakes, cookies, and carbonated drinks. But there is some good news. The cost of eggs, butter, and milk prices fell last month. Fresh fruit like apples even made the list. And though dessert costs are up, the price of sugar and sugar substitutes fell a little more than usual. Meanwhile, some prices stayed flat. 
A few things you don't have to worry about, poultry, rice, and cheese prices. And here's a pro tip if you have to stick with a budget. Try using store apps where available to compare prices of items before making the drive. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. And experts say you should try minimizing trips to the grocery store during the pandemic or consider having those groceries delivered. Well, look how hugely popular curbside yes, has gotten lately. I, I love it. Hadn't used it before the pandemic. And, and now? Now I, there's no turning back. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's 512. We're at 80 degrees. And still ahead, country music star Tim McGraw getting ready to launch a new album with live stream show. We're going to tell you when and how you can get tickets. And next, Walmart ending a Black Friday tradition by closing stores on Thanksgiving. Details on the decision coming up. When migraine strikes, dissolve it with Nurtac. The only quick dissolve treatment for migraine attacks that can get many people back to normal activities and last up to 48 hours with just one dose. Wonderful. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. The most common side effect was nausea. Nurtec. One dose. Wonderful. I'm 53, but in my mind, I'm still 35. That's why I take Osteobiflex to keep me moving the way I was made to. It nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. Osteobiflex plus vitamin D for immune support. No matter the breed, the size, or the age, all dogs descend from wolves. And for thousands of years, they've shared a love for meat. Blue Wilderness is made to satisfy that desire. Feed the wolf that lives inside your dog with Blue Wilderness. Welcome back, 516. Amazon expanding its robot delivery program. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon expands testing of its delivery robot. Scout, a six-wheeled robot, has been on the road in two locations since January of last year, but Amazon now says it is being tested in Atlanta and Franklin, Tennessee. No word on when Scout's testing will be completed. A tradition ends in November when Walmart fans will have to shop online on Thanksgiving. For the first time in 30 years, Walmart is closing on the holiday as a way to say thanks to workers for stepping up during this pandemic. And baseball fans will still be able to influence their favorite team. When the season starts, people will be able to cheer or boo into Major League Baseball's app. Ballpark staff can then match that up with the artificial crowd noise that's being pumped into the stadium. We boo this pandemic, but we will cheer when it's over. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Time for your consumer headlines now. Our Sarah Costa joins us in the studio this morning with the latest. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, Twitter is trying to crack down on false information, and you could be getting some more Frosties from Wendy's. But first, Twitter is determined to shut down accounts that spread conspiracy theories online. The social networking site says it will permanently suspend some accounts linked to QAnon. QAnon is a group known for its disinformation campaigns. Followers believe in conspiracy theories, including a deep state effort against President Trump. Twitter's safety team tweeted Tuesday that spreading theories such as these has, quote, the potential to lead to offline harm. Well, Target has just about hit its target with fresh grocery pickup. Now more than 1,000 stores in 47 states are offering same-day pickup of everything from produce and dairy to meat and frozen food. That's in addition to everything else you can pick up either in store or curbside. The goal is 1,500 stores by the holidays to see if your target of choice offers fresh grocery pickup. Just check the app. Target says your order will be ready in a few hours, and there are no membership fees and no minimum order for free pickup. Well, here's a new way you can get free Frosties from Wendy's. The fast food chain is rolling out a new rewards program. Your purchases through the Wendy's app can now earn your, you points for food and drinks. Every dollar you spend gets you 10 points, and which includes Frosty Milkshakes for 150 points, for example. Wendy's is the first major burger chain to launch a rewards program focused on food. Fast food restaurants are putting a greater importance on digitally placed orders. Wendy's says more than 5% of its sales come from online and app orders. Mark and Stephanie. 
Yeah, those apps are getting a lot more discussion. Now you pull up the drive through they ask you flat out, hey, do you have our app? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that uh, Chick-fil-A already has that rewards program, and it's working very nicely for our family, so this should be cool, too. Awesome. Yeah. Let's check traffic right now. Let's see how things are looking on the highways and byways of the Alamo City. Marcus, do we have good news? Yes, no accidents right now, so that's the great news. No incidents out there, and the uh, construction starting to wrap up. So let's take a look at TransGuide. 410 at Babcock, no issues there. Moving over to the I-10-410 interchange, you can see there's more than enough room out there for folks. And then up on the northeast side, 410 Austin Highway. Travel eastbound and westbound on 410, no problems. <coughs> right near the 410-35 interchange, you can see in the background there, there's north and southbound lanes of 35 so far. Looking great. Thank you, Mark. Is it fir first blush, Mike? This looks like this picture was taken down at the coast. I know. Or something. I can't believe this is right around the corner on Woodlawn Lake. The, some of the prettiest pictures, especially you know when somebody's taking mm -hmm. a shot down toward downtown Woodlawn Lake, is just absolutely gorgeous there. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And even though you know, looks like. Uh, Looks like the, the skyline is about the same uh, view as yesterday. Remember, it's a little bit more crisp. We do have a lot more humidity out there this morning. Warmer temperatures as well. If you, uh, just to compare, yesterday I think we only had one temperature that was up in the 80s, and now we've got a handful of them, and the humidity is definitely up. Dew points are back up into the mid-70s right now. We were down about 70, and it was a little bit more comfortable yesterday, so we are dealing with the heat index right now in the uh, low to mid-80s around the area, and that's the thing we're going to be dealing with for the next couple of days because the humidity is going to be staying well up into the in the afternoon hours well up into the upper 60s and low 70s and with temperatures at or above normal normal being 95 we're looking at some mid upper 90s in the next couple of days it's going to be pretty hot and humid then the rain is going to be moving in here as far as today uh, rapid update computer model has a couple of showers maybe popping up around the area again i wouldn't count on much of anything Few and far between. If you get one of these showers, fantastic. Um, you could have a decent little downpour, but uh, again, they're going to be few and far between. And tomorrow, basically almost nothing out there as far as any rain, perhaps just one or two of them sort of uh, scattered about the area. Yesterday's rain at at this time yesterday it was looking very promising that we are going to get rain from this system, and this thing decided to just work its way basically pretty much straight up to the north. We had a few of those uh, scattered showers in the afternoon along the coastal plain. All right, out to the east of us, there's that disturbance, which is still working its way in our direction. And Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on it. Maybe a 30% chance it could form into something. There is warm water out there in the Gulf of Mexico, of course, but uh, it's not looking right now as though it would become anything tropical. It's going to have a lot of tropical moisture associated with it, and that's why we could see some decent downpours. The other thing that has changed a little bit is the timing. It looks like it is being delayed a little bit by, say, about 12 hours or so. So instead of Friday and Friday night especially, now it's going to be like Saturday, overnight Friday into Saturday, throughout the day on Saturday, and then Saturday night into Sunday. And also the position is a little bit different. Yesterday it looked like it was going to be more of a uh, shot right at us, and now it's a little further down to the south, but we'd still be on the, the right-hand side of it, the rainier side of it, and this would last into uh, Sunday. Right now, about widespread one, three inches of rain is going to be possible with some heavier amounts on top of that. Again, we're still a couple of days off, so you know things are going to be kind of narrowing in on it, but uh, it is looking still promising for the weekend. 89 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature, normal is 95, just about normal 96, but of course we do have the humidity out there. One or two showers are possible today, but not very likely. Tomorrow, pretty much take rain out of the picture, upper 90s, same thing on Friday. Then we have the chance for the uh, showers, thunderstorms, a couple of heavier downpours are possible over the weekend. Temperatures only in the low 90s and maybe a couple of leftover showers on Monday. So it looks like a bulk of the weekend you're setting aside for rain chances. Mm -hmm. Good. And like I said, things have moved because, you know, two days ago, Sunday looked like we might have mm -hmm. salvaged it a little bit, but now right. it looks like it's going to be raining into Sunday as well. So I think we're okay with a multi day nope. reservation yeah, for Mother sure. Nature. We'll, we'll take that. No complaints, yeah, as far <laughs> as that goes. Thank you, Mike. 523, 80 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, a look at the cast of the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, reuniting for a special rereading of the movie script. 526, the pandemic still affecting everything, including Hollywood. 
That includes events taking place online instead of in person and more celebrities testing positive. CNN's David Daniel has the latest in today's Hollywood Minute. Hello! Hello. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World writer-director Edgar Wright led a 10th anniversary table read of the cult classic. The virtual reunion featured most of the stars of the fantasy action comedy, as well as original Scott Pilgrim graphic novels creator Brian Lee O'Malley. The event was a benefit for Water for People, which helps bring clean water and sanitation to communities worldwide. It's just a great collection of songs and music. Tim McGraw's new album is Here on Earth, and due to the pandemic, he's launching it with a live stream. August 21st, McGraw will play both new and classic songs, tell stories, and chat with songwriters and his five-piece backing band. Tickets are on sale now at live.timmcgraw.com. This was a story that needs to be told. Anna Kent is the latest celebrity to announce a COVID-19 diagnosis. The actress posted on Instagram she was extremely sick for over three weeks and still has lingering symptoms. She warns, I wore a mask. I used hand sanitizer. One time when the world was starting to open up, I decided to forego wearing my mask in public. One time. And I ended up getting it. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It is now just about 528, 80 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, drug makers are discussing the timeline for when a COVID-19 vaccine will be made available to the general public. Details on that coming up. And the latest on a case out of Michigan where a woman has been arrested for allegedly trying to hire someone to kill her ex-husband. And we're going to tell you about the latest case at community initiative that focuses on keeping families safe during these hot summer months. Good morning, rise and shine. It is Wednesday, the 22nd of July. Thanks for joining us. Happy Wednesday. And I hope you were able to stay cool yesterday. It got a little warm. You know, we're waiting for the rain, but it still got warm yesterday. It's all relative, Mike, right? Because we're still not messing with record high temperatures anymore, at least for now. No, at least we are not. Because, of course, this time last week, we, you know, were in that string of triple digits and had just gotten done setting the hottest July temperature ever. But, uh, no, we don't have anything like that. It is going to be hot again today, hot and humid, and the next couple of days. Then we've got uh, the rain, uh, which is moving on in here. Some low clouds this morning. Temperatures uh, just to compare to yesterday. We are up a few degrees. Yesterday we had actually dropped down into the uh, mid 70s and there weren't really any 80s on the map yesterday, but uh, we do have more today and there is more humidity out there. You're going to notice it a lot more when you step outside with these dew points back up into the uh, mid 70s. So there is a heat index to deal with right now. And in some cases, especially in the next couple of days, you can add about 20 to these numbers. So we're going to be seeing heat index readings well up into the low hundreds, maybe even the 105 range as we get into uh, especially tomorrow and Friday 89 at noon 96 for a high temperature today. Yeah, a couple of showers are possible. Wouldn't count on it uh, here or there about the same situation tomorrow and even on Friday lesser chances of rain on Friday. So the timing of that low moving in from the Gulf has kind of been moved back a little bit about 12 uh, 18 hours or so, but it's still looking like it's going to give us a fairly wet weekend. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo been quiet up to this point. Still the case. It has Mike and so far Still no accidents, that's the great news, and we are seeing that uh, construction get picked up little by little. Let's take a look here, 281 up there by the airport, no problems there, and I-10 La Cantera, they are picking up those construction barrels. So the westbound lanes are gonna be open once again, all lanes will be open. 410 there at uh, Austin Highway, no issues, and then you can see 10 at Callahan, east and westbound lanes, right now, still running smoothly. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. A fire at a home on the city's northwest side sent several fire units to the scene early this morning. Our Katrina Weber is live now at the scene in the 6,000 block of Beaver Trail. Katrina. Well, good morning. Uh, yes, we're here in the uh, 6,000 block of Beaver Trail. From fo what firefighters tell us, it seems most of the hard work is over. They have the fire out. They're now hosing down and putting away their equipment. They've been battling, uh, or they had battled the fire in the attic of this home. That's where they found the flames this morning when they arrived around 4.30. They say they got here based on a ringing alarm and then found that fire in the attic. It seems like it was uh, coming from either an electrical system or the HVAC system in the home. They say that is what is damaged in the home. Other than that, it is livable. There was no one here at the time and no one was injured. 
and firefighters say they really don't even need to call in arson investigators because it does seem that this was an accidental fire, perhaps related to the electrical or HVAC system in this home. So again, they have things wrapped up here uh, in the 6,000 block of Beaver Trail, and they are due to leave here momentarily. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A show of support from San Antonio to Houston for firefighter Captain Leroy Lucio. He lived here in San Antonio but worked in Houston. Captain Lucio also spent a month in a San Antonio hospital after becoming infected with the coronavirus, battling the illness for weeks before passing away. I appreciate the help of the San Antonio Fire Department and Chief Hood. They have uh, provided everything that we've, that we've asked for, and I can't say enough about the uh, support that the San Antonio Fire Department has given us in honoring our, our captain. That's the chief of Houston Fire. Captain Lucio, a 29-year veteran and is the first Houston firefighter to die from complications of COVID-19. The Houston Professional Firefighters Association says his passing will be classified as a line of duty death. Experts with pharmaceutical companies working to develop coronavirus vaccines spoke about their progress to Congress on Tuesday. Many say they are on course to have a vaccine by the end of the year. This as the U.S. recorded more than a thousand COVID-19 deaths Tuesday for the first time in two weeks, according to Johns Hopkins University. CNN's Reed Binion reports. I would not wait to see if one was better than another. The nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, saying Americans should get the coronavirus vaccine as soon as one becomes available. How soon that could be was the topic of discussion between lawmakers and pharmaceutical and biotech executives at a Tuesday hearing. We're pursuing two promising vaccines. We have a line of sight and a clear uh, critical path. This as President Trump gave his first coronavirus briefing since April, changing his tone on testing. If the doctors and the professionals feel that even though we're at a level that nobody ever dreamt possible, that they would like to do more, I'm OK with it. Negotiations have ramped up in recent days on whether to include money for testing in the next round of stimulus, with the White House and Senate Republicans divided on the details of the proposal. As it's written to my, right now, I'm not only a no, I'm a hell no. This amid a shortage of testing supplies recently and major delays in getting results, even though lawmakers estimate that between seven and eight billion dollars in allocated funding hasn't been spent. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden slamming Trump's handling of the crisis. This man simply doesn't understand. You know, he's quit on you and he's quit on this country. I'm Reed Binion reporting. In your morning headlines, Chicago police say at least 14 people were shot in a drive-by shooting outside a funeral home last night. That vehicle with the shooters then crashed and the gunman ran off. Police say people at the funeral home shot back at those suspects and they have one person of interest detained for questioning. The victims were taken to five different hospitals for their injuries and police are still looking into that shooting, saying they found around 60 shell casings at the scene. Australia, Japan and the U.S. conducting a trilateral passage of the Philippine Sea, which lights closely to the South China Sea, is the latest signs of military might near disputed waters. Since Sunday, the naval ships have held joint exercises which were expected to last until tomorrow. Australia's Defense Department says the naval ships will also participate in upcoming exercises near Hawaii. And Prince George is growing up. The young heir to the British throne turned seven today. Ahead of his birthday, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge released new pictures of George. The photos were taken earlier this month by his mother, Catherine. Judging by a smile, George must be having fun at his family's country home. Well, I see so much of his father in his face, but also a little bit of Princess Diana, I think. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, growing up. Yeah. yeah, adorable kid. 538, 80 degrees. Up next, new details on a woman who was arrested for allegedly trying to hire someone to kill her ex-husband. Outside with Live Camp, if we told you that the upcoming weekend was looking soggy, would you be upset? No, I'll be excited. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> Forecast is coming up. 541 alleged murder for hire plot brought down by an undercover state trooper. That's as police say a woman thought she found a hitman online to have her ex-husband killed. ABC's Andrea Fujihi has more from New York. 
This morning, a Michigan woman is now behind bars after police say she used a fictitious website to try to have her ex-husband murdered. I'm very surprised that somebody thought that this website was a true website that you could do this. Investigators say 51 year old Wendy Wayne contacted rentahitman.com and completed a request form. But instead of a call back, police say the owner of the site called them. Police say Wendy met with an undercover officer and told them she was willing to pay $5,000 plus out of state travel expenses to get the job done where her ex-husband now lives. We used a, uh, a state trooper posing as the hitman and there was a conversation and she provided some funds for travels, and at that time, arrest was made. Now, arrested and charged for solicitation to commit murder. Police say the owner of the site claims he's helped stop more than 130 murders. I most definitely think that uh, a life was saved, and doing a news story on this, I'm pretty sure that when this news story gets out, that some other uh, lives might be uh, saved by this. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. In Northern California, the owner of a tech website called rentahitman.com says they've also received many requests to have people killed. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 542, 80 degrees. Up next, looking to add to the family, we have some furry friends that are in desperate need of a forever home. 545. Good morning and welcome back. Every summer, KSAT joins up with our community partners, University Health System, to continue to keep our viewers informed about how to keep your families safe. From how to prevent heat stroke to water safety, over the next couple of days, professionals from University Health System will provide us with the latest safety tips. Our Sarah Costa joins us live now with an overview of our summer safety campaign. Good morning. Hey, Good morning, guys. Well, you know it's been hot. I don't have to tell you that. That's Mike's job to talk to you about those triple digits. But how to keep you and your family safe is actually really important, especially during those triple digits. The most common weather occurrence associated with death is not a natural disaster like a hurricane, but it's the heat. It's why University Health System will be sharing ways to keep you safe this summer. And since more families will be visiting the water to stay cool, we'll also hear from health professionals about how to stay safe. They warn that drowning is silent. We'll learn about what to watch for when swimming this summer. And not just because of the weather, but also with the COVID-19 pandemic, more families are getting outdoors to stretch their legs with walks or long bike rides. We will also bring you some tips to stay safe, whether you are a pedestrian or behind the wheel. So make sure you tune in on to G GMSA tomorrow when we will start our summer safety series. And of course, you'll be able to find these stories under our KSAC community section on our website. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. And with the pandemic, these are good reminders for a lot of families who are focused on the pandemic, but now need to focus on summer safety. It's as well. easy to forget. Most of the time. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you. And as we take a look at the roadways, the map is still looking great out there with no accidents. As we take a look at a couple of trans guide cameras, 35, 6 and 04 up on the northeast side, no issues. Then here in the downtown area, 37 and Jones Avenue, north and south on lanes are looking great. No problems here up there by the airport, 281 at 410. Thank you, Marcus, for the update. All right, we're going to talk about weather in a minute. Mm -hmm. Won't okay. have any triple digits like Sarah was saying, but it's going to yeah. feel like it. She did remind you that that's your job to tell us that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> hey, she forgot. <laughs> I had to be the yeah, it's going to be. Anyway, uh, more on that in just a minute and talk about a wet weekend. First of all, we've got to talk about some animals that are up for adoption over there at the uh, San Antonio Humane Society. Look at these beautiful little kitties right there. Oh, my goodness gracious. They are, these is Fozzie Bear and John, Aww. five months old, fun little brothers looking for a good home together. They love to play, climb, of course, snuggle together. Yes, and George... <laughs> Okay, this guy coming up, beautiful one-year-old Mastiff mix. He's honestly just a big baby, loves to sit, cuddle. Aww. I'm sure he takes up a lot of the couch as well. Remember, they are still doing the no-contact adoptions as well as curbside wellness clinics. For more information, dates, locations, please visit sahumane.org, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 for more information. Oh, cute little puppies, yes. All right, what's this look like to you? Don't read the caption. Stingray. Well, well, I my uh, I already had Roadrunner on the brain because of that's what, what we yeah. saw the other day. It says it looks like another Roadrunner. Oh, for real? I was, it was just a guess. I just, <laughs> Seriously, yeah, I, that's what. You told me not to read the caption, so I didn't. I didn't, and I got it wrong. <laughs> 
I'm not kind of, sort of, I guess. Yeah, right. I guess Is without that, one that extra facing stuff. that way again. I wish we could do a side by side way. comparison because the other one really yeah. looked like the UTSA logo. Oh, now I, I see that. Because yesterday's I had flipped around. What's, what is this one going this way? Yep. Okay. Yeah, hmm. I see it now. Well, thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, got some, as you can see, lots of clouds hanging around here. Temperatures are actually up a little bit. You're going to notice it when you step outside this morning. Yesterday it was kind of comfortable at this time of the morning, but now we've got uh, humidity two points back up in the mid 70s. So, yeah, it's you can definitely notice humidity and uh, heat index readings 85 in town, 82 New Braunfels at about 20 to these numbers. That's going to be the case over the next couple of days. Uh, we're going to be keeping humidity around in the afternoon, so you'll definitely notice the heat index, which you're going to be well up into the low hundreds the next couple of days. At least we can look forward to the weekend. So today, first of all, computer model has a couple of straight uh, showers trying to pop up. You know, one or two of them here and there throughout the afternoon hours. That's basically about it. Few and far between at best. I wouldn't count on anything today. Yesterday, of course, we were looking at uh, this batch of rain well off to the east, and that decided to just hightail it straight north. So we really didn't see much of anything. I mean, there may have been a couple of showers scattered about here and there. We're still looking at this system out, and notice how it is very unorganized. It is we're not starting to see any sort of circulation, no circular pattern to it at all. It is going to continue to work its way across the Gulf of Mexico. There is a very small chance that it could actually develop into something tropical, but uh, right now it, it's not looking like it looking at a lot of different computer models. And the only thing that's really changed as far as the long range forecast going into the weekend in this rain event is the timing of it. It's been kind of pushed back a little bit more. Um, it, it had looked like it was going to be out of here. The rain was going to be over uh, by early to mid Sunday. Now it's going to be sticking around throughout most of uh, Sunday, it looks like. So instead of seeing rain on Friday, uh, it may start late on Friday and then early on Saturday morning and then work its way across the area during the day on Saturday. Then the heaviest rain is going to be coming on in here Saturday night into Sunday. And also the position of this has moved a little bit further to the south. And that's uh, the other change that has taken place. And this would last throughout the day on Sunday and then probably even into Monday. So still a couple of days off, but it's still looking encouraging that uh, computer models are kind of agreeing a little bit more on uh, timing as well as position of this. The 89 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today, 96. Normal's 95, so in the ballpark, again, a couple of showers are possible, and we will have that humidity to deal with, so it's going to feel hotter than that. It's going to be pretty toasty the next couple of days. A lot of humidity, low hundreds for heat index readings, and then we have those rain chances moving on in here. Maybe some heavy rain. Uh, right now, about one to three inches widespread, and then heavier pockets on top of that Saturday, and especially now it looks like Sunday. Fantastic. Well, the, I was going to say the warm weather will pay off, so we'll wait for that weekend. And we need the rain. Mm -hmm. Having some clouds around, taking a break from the heat too, so yeah. We'll bank it. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Mike. 552, 80 degrees. And up next, the name Marie Carey, known throughout the world, but a new movie digs deeper into the life of the legendary scientist than the quick biographical sketch most of us get in school. We're going to have a preview just ahead. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, an ABC News exclusive with three NBA greats, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Paul. They are all teaming up off the court, talking about their new social justice initiative, helping the black community, and what life is like inside the NBA bubble. You'll see it only here on GMA. I want to tell you about radium, a most peculiar and remarkable element because... It does not behave as it should. Neither did Marie Curie. The only person to win Nobel Prizes in two separate sciences is the focus of Radioactive. We are here to tell you that you have fundamentally misunderstood the atom. Rosamund Pike and Sam Riley play Marie and Pierre Curie, collaborators in the lab and in life. There is another element that's skewing the results. You think you found an undiscovered element? <laughs> you know, who changed the face of the 20th century and unleashed, you know, one of the most remarkable discoveries and also one of the most destructive 
uh, natural phenomenon on the world. I mean, it, it's, it's mind-blowing. Radioactive charts their discoveries, as well as the far-reaching consequences of their work, and digs into details of Marie's life that surprised director Marjan Satrapi. I thought I knew everything, and once I put uh, my nose into it, and when I start making the research, each step it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Both Satrapi and Riley heaped praise on Pike's portrayal of Curie. That's the secret actors don't want to tell you. You know, when you're working with someone really good, you believe what they're saying and what you're saying then comes naturally. This is my fight. And I will win it. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Happy Friday. City Council members holding two safety supply kit giveaways for small businesses and nonprofits. Friday morning, District 4 Councilwoman Adriana Rocha Garcia will hold a drive at Traders Village. It's from 10 to 2. Pre registration is required. And later that evening, District 2 Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan is holding one at the Walls and YMCA. That's from 7 p.m. to 9. Giveaways are open to businesses and nonprofits with 25 or fewer employees. You can sign up at San Antonio. Hope you're having a great morning so far. Still ahead in the next hour of GMSA, the pandemic changing the way students are taught. That's obvious, but that means more parents are having to get involved more than ever before. We have some great ways families can prepare for the upcoming school year, whatever that may be looking like. And TransGuide, get the latest now. Coming up from Officer Marcus Trujillo, as we're seeing traffic building there at 35 near Evans Road. And Mike has an update on your wet weekend. This morning, physicians are giving a warning to expectant mothers about coronavirus. Hear what they have to say in a matter of minutes. And coming up, the latest numbers on the coronavirus outbreak here in the United States. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the details. And taking a look outside with live cam, when you step outside, you will feel that humidity, but I promise you the payoff will be later in the week. We'll check in with Mike right now in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, July 22nd. Yes, we made it to Wednesday, and if we make it to the weekend, we will see that rain. All week long, Mike has been talking about our rain chances, and you said every day we get a little bit closer, we have a better handle on how this could play out. Right, and the the thing that's really changed, uh, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, the timing has moved back a little bit about anywhere from 12 to 18 hours. It had looked like we'd initially start to see things uh, late Friday evening and into Saturday. Now it's going to be uh, Saturday morning when things will start with this and then through the day Saturday and most of the day on Sunday. More on that coming up in long weather. First of all, yeah, you notice that when you step outside this morning, temperatures are up about uh, two, three degrees compared to yesterday, but the dew point temperatures are up about two, three, four degrees. We did drop down one notch in the past hour, but we're still looking at mid seventies around here. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely kind of some tropical air and we've got a heat index right now of 84 degrees. And that's what we're going to be dealing with prior to the rain event is hot temperatures, mid upper nineties, and the humidity is going to be sticking around throughout the afternoons. And so therefore, uh, especially by tomorrow uh, and Friday, we're going to be dealing with heat index readings that are going to be well up into the uh, low hundreds. 77 this morning, so we may drop down a couple of degrees and then we'll start the, uh, the warming process, obviously, and make it up into the upper 80s by noon. And then we're going to be topping off about normal, normal being 95, going for 96. A shower or two is possible today. I wouldn't count on it, though, and then pretty much take rain out of the picture tomorrow and Friday. Then we have the weekend, and we're going to be talking more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and our favorite man that... Where's a badge, Officer Marcus Trujillo? Well, thank you, Mike. And it's been a while since we've had some rain. Oh, it's uh, so 25, 22, so 25. Check days. the windshield wipers. Just make sure windshield wipers are up to par and uh, check the tire inflation also. Just make sure you have enough air in those tires before we get any of that this weekend. As we take a look here, so far, no accidents. We're doing great out there. 37 in Jones, still no issues for the north or the southbound lanes. And then 21 in Grayson, also looking pretty good as well. We take a look at one more camera there, 281 up there by the airport. You can see east and westbound lanes of Fortune moving great. The connector ramps so far, no congestion there. Mark and Stephanie. We've been following results of the Texas primary runoff election closely, and we have an update for you this morning. Sarah Costa live from the newsroom to give us the latest on Texas's District 23 congressional race. Sarah. 
Good morning, Mark. It was a tight race. Now, a week later, the lead appears to be growing in the Republican runoff for Congressional District 23. Tony Gonzalez was just seven votes ahead of Raul Reyes. But now the Gonzalez campaign says that's increased to a 23 vote lead. In a statement, his campaign says, quote, Tony's margin of victory has increased now that most counties, including all the largest counties in the district, have updated the results to reflect all votes legally cast. End quote. Gonzalez's opponent has not given up the race. On Facebook, Raul Reyes posted, quote, Ballot canvassing through our 29 county district has started this week, with the deadline being July Thursday, July 23rd. End quote. He also made a mention of an effort for a recount fund. On the Democrat side is Gina Ortiz Jones, who won her March primary. This is the race to replace Representative Will Hurd, who was stepping aside at the end of his term. District 23 stretches from San Antonio to El Paso. You can follow the latest election headlines right now on KSAT.com. Just search Vote 2020. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the city will be releasing updated data today on how San Antonio is fighting the coronavirus. The latest numbers show that 12 more people have died from the coronavirus in Bear County and health officials confirmed 551 new cases. Local officials say these cases could be linked to the 4th of July. Right now, 435 people are in an intensive care unit and only 10% of staffed hospital beds are available. UT Health OBGYN doctors have a message for expectant mothers as the number of cases of coronavirus continue to rise. Doctors say they're seeing about 15 to 20 percent of pregnant patients test positive for COVID. Of that, about 85 percent are asymptomatic. Women are tested and presumed positive as soon as they check in. Doctors say mothers who were positive are then consulted about whether their babies will be taken away from them after delivery as a precaution. One mom who was positive when she delivered says it was scary, but she's urging others to stay calm. Corona took everything that we look forward to, like the baby showers, uh, the family coming to the baby. I um, just have a positive outcome, um, a positive mind and a strong and make sure you have a strong support system. If you have a newborn at home or you're late in your pregnancy, be careful of who's around you. Make sure that nobody's sick uh, who doesn't need to be around your baby. Metro Health says there's been an increase in pediatric COVID-19 cases. In May, the infection rate was 4.6%. It's now, they report, up to 11.2%. One local bar owner is speaking out after the TABC determined his establishment was in violation of social distancing guidelines. Agents found that that bar, the burn house, did temperature checks and instructed patrons to wear masks. However, undercover footage showed people dancing close to one another, some with masks and some without. The club was shut down days before Governor Greg Abbott issued an order to reclose bars across Texas due to the pandemic. Because of that order, the case against burn house was dismissed. The uncertainty that that you know government officials are 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 giving the, the public, not just the industry or the bar industry, but the entire public is needs to be unified some way, somehow. Uh, and you know, rather than blaming the bar industry, be real about it and say, we just don't know what the hell's going on anymore and we're trying to we're trying to figure it out. The bar owner tells us he hopes that one day state officials and the bar industry can find a way for bars to stay open to help owners weather the economic impact. A group that helped place Dr. Don Emmerich as the head of Metro Health here in San Antonio will now help find her replacement. Emmerich resigned from the position June 25th because it was within 180 days when she was hired. The management search firm Mercer Group must find her replacement free of charge. It took the city of San Antonio nine months to hire Emmerich, and there's currently no timetable to bring in a replacement. Right now, Assistant City Manager Dr. Colleen Bridger is serving as the interim head of Metro Health. In his first coronavirus briefing since April, President Donald Trump changed his message about the severity of the pandemic. Comes after the CDC reported the number of cases here in the U.S. is likely much higher than what has been reported. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. 
This morning, the latest numbers on coronavirus continue to show a steady surge. Hospitalizations are up in 40 states. The South looking like the Northeast back in April. In California, the number of confirmed cases is likely to surpass New York. And now an alarming new report from the CDC says the number of people infected in the first months of the pandemic could be 10 times higher than previously predicted. Dr. Anthony Fauci on CNN pushing for continued safety guidelines. Universal wearing of masks, close the bars, stay physically distant, wash your hands. The really fundamental things, it's not rocket science. Florida, another U.S. hotspot where hospitals are being pushed beyond capacity. Baptist Health in Miami has just one ICU bed left. Every day it's coming into more patients and they're very sick. Meanwhile, at the White House in his first coronavirus briefing since April, you, President you. Trump, who has downplayed the virus for weeks, now acknowledging the severity of the pandemic. It will probably, unfortunately, get worse before it gets better. While his likely opponent in November, Joe Biden, hitting Trump hard. He's basically waved the white flag. He said, I'm not responsible. I don't have to do anything. Dr. Anthony Fauci says he was not invited to Trump's briefing and hasn't spoken to the president since last week. Fauci also brushed off the president's recent remarks when he called Fauci an alarmist. I consider myself more a realist than an alarmist. Now, all of this is taking place while the debate to reopen schools rages on. In Florida, some parents and teachers are suing the governor to keep campuses closed, while here in D.C., some of the school districts are joining others around the country and switching to all virtual learning. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. 609, 80 degrees. You might not be allowed in the stadium, but you can still cheer on your favorite team. Find out how Major League Baseball is using technology to help the fans participate. Back to school has always been a hectic time for parents and students. The pandemic can cause this time to feel even crazier. After the break, we'll break, break down some of the top stories you should know about the upcoming school year. And taking a look outside with live cam, beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio. 80 degrees, when you step out, it will be humid, but the payoff will be later, we promise. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Area school districts are set to start in a month or less, and there's still so many questions that need to be answered for teachers, parents, and students. This information has been changing every day because of the pandemic, and we want to make it easy for our viewers to keep up with all these changes with our kset.com back to school page. Sarah Costa joins us live in studio with the latest stories on the page. Good morning, guys, and there's still so many nerves and lots of questions as information changes every single day, which is why we created this back to school page on kset.com to keep everyone informed. And right now, the latest information still remains that there will be no face to face classes or extracurricular activities in the San Antonio area until after September 7th. That was decided by the San Antonio Metro Health Department directive issued on Friday. They are also working with the task force group of teachers and students on how to best move forward. But as we wait for more updates, there are many other stories on our back to school page, including how some school districts in northern Texas are allowing teachers to wear scrubs to school, and it could be a trend we will see more districts getting on board with. Garland and Lancaster Independent School Districts recently announced the change. Teachers had requested the dress code change and the districts complied. The Garland superintendent said scrubs are easier to clean and disinfect, so it just made sense to make the change. Now, we're also learning about the side effects of remote learning. Right now on our website, we have two different surveys that are showing varying results. A recent UTSA survey says students are less engaged. According to teacher survey, nearly 2,000 K through 12 public school students, parents, and teachers across eight school districts in Bear County were surveyed. Results from the survey with parents and students will be released later. However, we also spoke with a local education instructional consultant who says local early surveys also show students are receiving a great instructional experience. However, the survey says the jury is still out on the long term effects of online learning. And you can find the latest school information on our back to school page. Just head to ksat.com slash back to school. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. I know a lot of parents and teachers are watching this very closely. 615, 80 degrees. 
Officer Marcus Trujillo, I know for Wednesday, was it looking too bad earlier? How's it looking now? It's actually still looking pretty good right now. Now, if you remember yesterday when we had a lot of traffic early in the morning and this morning, that just wasn't the case. We did have some construction here and there, but that's all cleared up. 2 to 1, 410 by the airport, still looking pretty good. And as we move on to some other areas, you can see 1604 Gulera on that far, far west side. That's the 151 entrance ramp headed back and towards town. No problems there. Then 35 Benzingo and traffic still moving along fairly well. Thank good you, sir. Here. Morning, Mike. How are you? We're good. How are yeah, you? Doing mm -hmm. well. So you were out yesterday afternoon, got pretty hot. Yes, it did. We were trying to brave a bike ride mm -hmm. again, and, and we waited and waited, but uh, we're like, okay, it looks like it's okay now. And you, then we walked back out and walked right back. Y'all did an A for effort, though. <laughs> yeah. Now, temperatures, now I know we haven't been anywhere near normal for the entire month of July, but uh, we are going to be seeing temperatures at or a little bit above normal, but then we got the humidity to deal with. So, you know, normal high being 95 degrees this time of year. I like the point of view in this KSAT Connect picture. This is wonderful, beautiful oh, view. Oh, beautiful. Oh, uh, the Alamo Dome and the Tower of the Americas. Great shot there. Thank you very much for the uh, the picture. Appreciate that one. Got some uh, clouds starting off this morning, of course, and temperatures keep pointing out how it's up a little bit compared to yesterday. The humidity, of course, is up compared to uh, yesterday. And come on, come on, map. There we go. We do have a little bit of a heat index to deal with as of right now, and that's what we're going to be dealing with in the afternoons. The next couple of days is the the humidity is going to put temperatures or make it feel like it's well up into the low hundreds the next couple of days. So despite the fact that high temperatures will be within range of normal. So as far as uh, today is concerned, a couple of stray showers are possible. Not very likely. Kind of the same song and dance that we've been going through the past a few days. And then uh, tomorrow, Friday, you can almost take rain completely out of the picture. Going back to yesterday, now we did have the uh, showers that uh, we're really showing up there off to the east of us. And we've got a couple of them, as you can see, in some of our eastern counties right now. But a lot of these are just kind of sliding straight up to the north. And, you know, that's taking into account the one or two showers out there and possible today. And that's going to be about it. This is the hope for the weekend. And notice how it, I mean, it's just literally a blob out there. There's nothing at all that is organized about this. There is a very small chance that it could become a bit more organized, but uh, Hurricane Center is not really not really too bullish on this one right now, about a 30% chance. And this despite the fact that it's going to be just traversing the uh, the Gulf of Mexico. And this is one computer model. And obviously it has, you know, not very well organized, maybe a little bit of circulation trying to form up as it reaches the coast. And this is going to be Friday as it reaches the coast. This is the, the change that has taken place uh, really since yesterday. It had looked like we we're going to start to see some of the effects of this late Friday and Friday night. Now it's been delayed by about 12 hours, maybe 18 hours or so. So it'll start to work its way in here Friday into Saturday. And this computer model pretty much has the uh, the center of circulation staying just about uh, right on top of San Antonio, maybe a little bit uh, below that. However, different computer model, um, about the same timing. Uh, but as far as the location of this, it has it primarily a little bit further down to the south. And so it has more of the heavy rain, maybe San Antonio and our southern counties around here. Both timing wise are about the same, but the difference being the positioning of it. It's still, I mean, both computer models have uh, almost everybody getting some decent rain and maybe in some cases, unfortunately, a little too much rain. And this would be continuing through a good portion of the day on Sunday. And then finally, uh, well, trying to get on out of here by the first of the week, but still a few straggling showers around here, even going into Monday. So uh, it's still very encouraging as far as the rain chances over the weekend, just the, the timing of it. Uh, it may make for just a completely wet weekend, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Nine, uh, 89 degrees, pardon me, at uh, noon today, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature today up to 96 couple of showers are possible, although not very likely. If anything, maybe uh, off to the east would be the best chance for it. And then tomorrow, we're going to be up to uh, 97 degrees, a couple of notches above normal, and the heat index is going to be well up into the low hundreds. Then those showers and storms move in here Saturday, Sunday, and a few lingering ones on Monday. Wow. I know. Looking forward to it, Mike. Yeah. And, and again, timing wise, everything's kind of in agreement now, mm -hmm. computer models, but you know exactly where it is. So and that's that can still fluctuate a little bit because it's still got about uh, you know two, almost three days till it gets here. So keep us posted Thanks, right Mike. now. 620, 80 degrees.
and three of the biggest names in the NBA are launching a major social justice effort. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor today about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. And this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, we sit down with three NBA superstars. What goes on in the bubble that we don't see? Carmelo Anthony, Chris Paul, and Dwayne Wade talking NBA and their collaboration on the Social Change Fund. Um, I think right now, uh, with everything that has happened since George Floyd in the last two months, um, we, have, we have even more responsibility now to make sure that we're making sure that our communities are taken care of. Coming up at 7 a.m., what they're saying about those first scrimmages and life inside the bubble. All we know is cornhole and fishing. So everybody <laughs> catching the same fish, too. <laughs> Throwing it right back. That's funny. <laughs> hey, but look, all jokes aside, where where can you go? Like, how can you even sneak out? I ain't even trying to be funny. I'm being dead serious. It's like four knocks down here. Yeah. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. The University Interscholastic League has postponed the start of the high school football season in the state of Texas until September 24th for all schools in classes 6A and 5A. That impacts all the major school districts in the San Antonio and surrounding areas. Teams cannot start practicing until September 7th. The UIL says there will still be a full season. It will extend into January of 2021 to complete all of those games. In your morning consumer news, Amazon is expanding its delivery robot testing. Scout, a six-wheeled robot, has been on the road in two locations since January of last year. But Amazon now says it is being tested in Atlanta and Franklin, Tennessee. The company has not announced when Scout's testing will be completed. A tradition ends in November when Walmart fans will have to shop online on Thanksgiving. For the first time in 30 years, Walmart is closing on the holiday as a way of saying thanks to workers for stepping up during the pandemic. And baseball fans will still be able to influence their favorite team. When the season starts, people will be able to cheer or boo using Major League Baseball's app. Ballpark staff can then match that up with the artificial crowd noise that's being pumped into the stadium. So for Rangers fans, the season starts on Friday against the Colorado Rockies. And for the Astros fans, their first game is Friday against the Seattle Mariners. Just about 627, 80 degrees. And we are learning more about another death at Fort Hood Military Base here in Texas. We're going to update you on the third death in a month at that installation. And Houston officials investigating a fire at the Chinese consulate. Some officials say it looks like documents were being burned in trash cans. Firefighters were called out to a home after a report of a gas explosion on the northwest side. We're going to get an update on that investigation. Outside with live cam, morning clouds, afternoon sunshine and heat, but yep, rain is still in the forecast and we have a better handle on how that is going to play out with meteorologist Mike Ostrage. But first things first, good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is July 22nd. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. And for a Wednesday, it's not looking too bad out there for traffic. 
Not bad at all. We're doing very, very well out there in the roadways. Uh, we had some construction very early this morning. That's all picked up and out of the way. So far, no accidents. Keep your fingers crossed. Early this morning, Mother Nature's painting kind of a gray canvas behind you there, Mike. Yeah, kind of our usual uh, morning clouds around here because we have some extra humidity around this morning. So you're going to notice that when you step outside. And uh, you're going to be noticing humidity in the afternoons as well. Yesterday was pretty much on the, the warm side, and temperatures will slowly go up. We're not looking at any more triple digits this week, but we are looking at um, the heat index readings that are going to be well up into the triple digits. So we're at 80 right now, but holding steady. Same thing, Castroville, 79 Helotus, and then dew point temperatures, which were down about 71, 70 for the most part yesterday, even a lot of 60s in the hill country. So we do have more humidity around here. So yes, you will notice it when you uh, open up the front door. And partly cloudy skies, a shower or a storm is possible. 10% chance. I mean, it's now almost not even worth a mention today. Partly cloudy. It is going to be getting hotter and on the humid side. Like I said, so heat index readings are going to be well up into the low hundreds. Uh, maybe today, but especially tomorrow and Friday. Then good chance of rain, maybe some heavy rain over the weekend. Timing has moved back a little bit. So instead of being later Friday evening, it's going to be more like Saturday, but it'll be sticking around through Sunday then. Just got the latest computer model run. I'm going to talk about that because now computer models are kind of really agreeing about this. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. And once again, time saver traffic. Yeah, there has there been anything as far as accidents this morning? Not yet. Okay. So far, we've been very, very lucky. Uh, we did have some construction overnight. That's picked up out of the way, so all lanes are back open once again. Let's take a look at a couple of transguide cameras right now. 35 at Evans. Start to see some slight increases, both in the north and the southbound lanes, all the way through 35 at 1604, as you see here in this shot. Moving over to 37 here, Jones in downtown vicinity. Still no increases on 37 there, all the way through 281. And then 281 at 410. So far, no problems there. Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, firefighters put out a fire on the northwest side that they say may have started from a gas explosion. It happened in the 6000 block of Beaver Trail around 420 this morning. That's near De Zavala and I-10. Firefighters say they found the fire in the attic when they got there, but they were able to put that out quickly. They say nobody was home at the time. Today, local health officials will release a new model to show how San Antonio is faring during the pandemic. The latest report still shows more positive COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. Our Sarah Costa joins us live from the newsroom with a look at some of the top stories impacting our community during this time. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Well, a local pediatrician says half of all children in San Antonio are now behind on their routine vaccinations because of the pandemic. Dr. Rob Sanders with PD Express says social distancing rules and unemployment are causing parents to pass up on their child's immunizations. He also says the state has not held mass immunization clinics leading into the school year like there have been in the past. Sanders says this could have a big impact in the fall because students need to have up to date vaccinations. He says every child can get free vaccines through the state. You just need to request an appointment through the pediatrician's office. Well, a San Antonio team is responsible for keeping faulty personal protective equipment out of local hospitals. Last month, an investigation by ProPublica revealed a Silicon Valley investor was paying workers to repackage non-medical masks and sending them to Texas emergency workers. Those masks were denied by the local team and local hospitals did not pay for them. As PPE continues to be needed during the pandemic, the team says they will continue to make sure all equipment is safe for essential workers. And VIA says it will increase the number of routes because more riders need them. The new modifications to the, to the essential service schedule will come out next week. VIA says it will adjust routes so there are more buses in high frequency areas and less buses in traffic areas that don't have the need for them. VIA will still require white riders to social distance and wear face masks while on the bus. And of course, you can find all these stories right now on KSAT.com. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. In your morning headlines, the Bell County Sheriff's Department looking into why the body of a Fort Hood soldier was found. This is the third time in a month that a Fort Hood soldier's body has been discovered on the installation. Fort Hood officials say 26-year-old Private Mahora Morta was found dead next to a reservoir managed by the Army Corps of Engineers. Officials have not released any more information at this time. Over in Houston, firefighters were called to the Chinese consulate late last night after reports of smoke. 
Houston's fire chief says the fire was contained and did not appear to damage the building. Investigators say documents were being burned in trash cans in the courtyard of the consulate. Video shared by a viewer who live in next to the consulate shows several open bins or containers with flames coming out of them. People could be seen throwing things into the flaming bins. A Houston police source says the consulate and nearby compound where many employees of the consulate live are being evicted on Friday. Chicago police say at least 14 people were shot in a drive by shooting outside a funeral home last night. Investigators say several targets of the shooting shot back at those suspects. Now the vehicle with the suspects then crashed and the gunman ran off. Police do say that they have one person of interest detained for questioning. The victims were taken to five different hospitals for their injuries. The Dominican Republic under a state of emergency, its president issued a national decree due to an increase in COVID-19 cases. It will last 45 days and is meant to help avoid overwhelming medical services. More than 54,000 cases of COVID-19 and nearly 1,000 deaths have been reported in the Dominican Republic. The U.S. Geological Survey monitoring the aftermath of a powerful earthquake in Alaska. The magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck near the town of Perryville, which is south of Anchorage. A tsunami warning has been issued for southern parts of the state along the Gulf of Alaska. 637 right now at alleged murder for hire plot brought down by an undercover state trooper. As police say, a woman thought she found a hitman online to have her ex-husband killed. ABC's Andrea Fujihi has more from New York. This morning, a Michigan woman is now behind bars after police say she used a fictitious website to try to have her ex-husband murdered. I'm very surprised that somebody thought that this website was a true website that you could do this. Investigators say 51 year old Wendy Wayne contacted rentahitman.com and completed a request form. But instead of a call back, police say the owner of the site called them. Police say Wendy met with an undercover officer and told them she was willing to pay $5,000 plus out of state travel expenses to get the job done where her ex-husband now lives. We used a, uh, a state trooper posing as the hitman and there was a conversation and she provided some funds for travels, and at that time, arrest was made. Now, arrested and charged for solicitation to commit murder. Police say the owner of the site claims he's helped stop more than 130 murders. I most definitely think that uh, a life was saved, and doing a news story on this, I'm pretty sure that when this news story gets out that some other uh, lives might be uh, saved by this. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. In Northern California, the owner of a tech website called rentahitman.com says they've also received many requests to have people killed. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 638, 80 degrees. And students having to adjust how they learn remotely and parents also having to adjust how they help their kids with that schoolwork. After the break, we're going to learn some ways that parents and students can prepare for this upcoming school year. Six forty two. Welcome back. It goes without saying the pandemic is changing the way students learn, which means parents are having to get more involved more so than ever before. Our Erica Hernandez has some tips for families as they prepare for the new school year. Kids here in San Antonio and across the country are being given alternate resources to learn and study from home, but it can be easy for them to get distracted with social media, videos, and games. So here are some things to keep in mind to ensure a structure stays strong while at home. First, try a digital quarantine. Consider limiting your children's cell phones and tablets until their schoolwork is done. That way it can receive their undivided attention. Apps, games, and messaging features are fun, but they can also be distracting. If possible, give your kids a dedicated device such as a school laptop for maximum online learning. Next, make some space. Your children will do their best work in a quiet, comfortable, and dedicated space devoted to learning. While they're logged in, do your best to observe. Look at your children's eyes to see if they're following along with the screen, taking notes, or zoning out. If you find that your child is not engaging with the lessons, don't be afraid to contact the school district or teachers to better explore the issue. 
also make sure your kids take breaks. While learning is important, so is physical activity and time away from screens. Set some alarms and encourage them to get up, get some fresh air to play, or have a snack so they are not sedentary for the entire day. And remember, you as a parent are not alone in this journey. Check in with other parents to see what works for them. Share useful hints and concerns. Finally, put aside some time for family fun. Between school and work, it's rare for parents and kids to have this much time together, so turn it into an opportunity for some bonding. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Every summer, KSAT and our community partners, University Health System, work together to keep our viewers informed about how to keep families safe. From how to prevent heat stroke to water safety over the next couple of days, professionals from University Health System will provide us with the latest, greatest safety tips. Our Sarah Costa joins us live with an overview of our summer safety campaign. Good morning. Good morning, and just because we didn't see triple digits this week, it doesn't mean the heat is going to be pumping the brakes anytime soon. It's why it's so important to know how to stay safe during extreme heat. The most common weather occurrence associated with death is not a natural disaster, but the heat. It's why University Health System will be sharing ways to keep safe this summer. Since more families will be visiting the water to stay cool, we'll also hear from health professionals about how to stay safe. They warn that drowning is Silent, and we'll learn about what to watch for when swimming this summer. And not just because of the weather, but also with the COVID-19 pandemic, more families are getting outdoors to stretch their legs with walks or bike rides. We will also bring you some tips to stay safe, whether you are a pedestrian or behind the wheel. So make sure to tune in to GMSA tomorrow when we start our summer safety series. And of course, you guys can see this all on KSAT.com. And that's very true, Sarah. A lot of people getting outdoors. I'm seeing neighbors I didn't know I had <laughs> recently. I've learned all the neighbors on the street within the last three months. It's a good time to do Wait, that. Wait, we have neighbors? <laughs> that's what those, yeah. You need the to people get that live next to you, yeah. yeah. Oh, the people we wave to, that's yes, right. Yes, that's yeah. right. Okay, we'll actually talk to them. Got it. All right, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Let's right. check in on our neighbor, our Officer Marcus Trujillo right now. <laughs> Well, right now, uh, everybody's being very neighborly out there on the roadways. No delays at this time. 281 410 still looking great. Let's move over here. You can see that uh, I-10 at 1604 so far. No problems there. The cloverleaf on the northwest side. And take a look. I-10 and Frio inbound outbound lanes. Really not too bad. There's more than enough room out there. And then uh, a little cloudier than it was yesterday morning. When you first walk out the door, you may want to turn around and go back inside. I don't blame you. I would if I could. But... Uh, we're here. That was my thought. <laughs> Because it's a lot more humid this morning. That's yeah. probably not with some of these clouds. So uh, we are still looking ahead to the weekend, but we have to make it through the next couple of days, first of all. So is this one of the most photogenic comets we've had in a very long time? I'm trying to think when the last comet, uh, it was back in the mid 90s. I think there was one. I, was that the Hale Bop? Hail Bop, or there was that one that was hard to pronounce, Hyakutake or something like that. Do you <laughs> oh, remember goodness. that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple of different ones. So, yeah, those were, but obviously a lot more people have more. Well, this know. one sounds like a character from Lord of the Rings. It's Neowise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, beautiful. And, you know, out in the hill country is the best place to see. And I think we're coming to the end of the, the viewing for this now. I think it's just a few more days when you can actually see it, about an hour or so uh, after sunset, looking up to the northwest. Yeah, like Marcus was talking about, there's our clouds out there this morning. 80 in town, same thing, Castroville temperatures up a little bit, and we do have a bit of a heat index to deal with because there is more humidity out there. Uh, one or two little sprinkles have now popped up on radar, just very few and far between here and there, and a couple more well off to the east, and those are obviously sliding up to the north. That's what the computer models are indicating, that there may be a shower here or there. Most of it would be well off to the east later on today. You know, one or two of them kind of trying to pop up here or there, and that's probably the extent of it. So wouldn't really count on any rain. And of course, yesterday, the rain that looked like it was coming in here decided to move straight off to the north, as is this batch of rain. Now, off to the east of us, there's that blob, if you will. That's the next low, which is working its way in our direction. That's what's going to be coming in here for the weekend. Timing has moved back a little bit, so it's going to be about 12 hours later. It had looked like it was going to be uh, sometime Friday evening in the overnight hours of Saturday. Now it looks like it's we'll start to see some of the rain from this early on Saturday morning, and that will continue to work its way in here. So 
pretty much uh, right now we're looking at almost a, a sure thing as far as rain uh, Saturday and even into Sunday. This model has the heaviest rain, the center of it basically down to the south. Another computer model has this up a little bit further to the north, uh, but in both situations, most of the area is going to be getting rain and potentially some heavy rain. Um, we're going to be looking at widespread, maybe one to three inches, and obviously there's going to be some heavier pockets thrown in on top of that. And some of this could continue into uh, Monday as well, depending on how quickly this thing gets on out of here. You may have heard we have a new tropical depression way out in the middle of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Tropical depression at number seven. It is forecast to become a tropical uh, storm and the name just escaped me. It's letter G and it is um, I can't think I just popped out of my head. This is forecast to work its way off to the east, moving into the Caribbean, and that's going to be uh, over the weekend. So it wouldn't have any, any effect on the United States at all until maybe sometime next week. Gonzalo? Gonzalo? Yes. Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Thank uh -huh. you very much. With a no, like Jello. Just looked it up this morning and just popped out of my head. Anyway, 89 degree. What's your name again? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, 89 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today up to 96. Heat index is going to put it up into the low hundreds and tomorrow going to be hot, going to be humid. Same thing on Friday, maybe a shower Friday, uh, kind of doubtful. Then the better rain chances move in here Saturday as well as Sunday, perhaps lingering even into Monday. Well, we, it, we know it's a lot to keep tabs on, so it's okay. So. Gonzalo. 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 I was almost going to go back to Cristobal because that was the one that everybody <laughs> right. mispronouncing and it was around for such a it long time. It was kind time, of all so. over the place, yeah, but yeah. we'll take uh, Gonzalo for 500. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got your back. Don't worry. Yep. Thank you much. 650, <laughs> 80 degrees. And during a time that many of us are working from home, it can be difficult to sign off from work. Join us tomorrow on GMSA uh, where we could go over how the experts say you can create a boundary between work and your personal life. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, an ABC News exclusive with three NBA greats, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Paul. They are all teaming up off the court, talking about their new social justice initiative, helping the black community, and what life is like inside the NBA bubble. You'll see it only here on GMA. In the news you need to know before you go, firefighters say a fire at a home on the northwest side may have started from a gas explosion. It happened in the 6000 block of Beaver Trail around 420 this morning. That's near De Zavala and I-10. Crews say they found the fire in the attic when they got there, but they were able to put it out quickly. They say nobody was home at the time. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, we're starting a brand new segment that your kiddos are going to love. That's right. Super meteorologist Katie Blake will be joining us in the studio to try out fun and easy science experiments all live. Today, she's doing the tie-dye milk experiment. So if your kids want to follow along here, this is what you need. A round cake pan or plate with high edges, cotton balls, uh, dish soap, and different colors of food dye and milk. So join us for the first ever Katie Science Lab today at 9 after Good Morning America. All right, for now, let's go ahead and take one last check with traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Stephanie, and still no accidents out there. I-10 at uh, Callahan still looking great. No problems there. I-10 and Frio, and as we jump over to 37 to Jones, you can see traffic moving along fairly well. Up on the northeast side, 35, 604, no issues there. Mike? Thank you, sir. And boy, it's a lot cloudier than what it was yesterday, and it's a lot more humid out there as well. We're still holding at 80, 79 Port SA, mid 70s in the hill country, but the uh, dew point temperatures remain in the uh, mid 70s. It's a lot higher than what it was yesterday. You're going to notice it when you step outside. 89 at noon, 96 a high temperature today, maybe a shower kind of doubtful, uh, but the heat index is something we'll be dealing with today and the next couple of days. Then those rain chances move in here for the weekend and we could get some widespread beneficial rain this weekend. Is it weird that we're giddy about this rain? No, not at all. When it's been uh, more than three weeks since we've had any measurable rain out there at the airport, I think it's 24, 25 days now in a row. Wow. I yeah. think at this point it's understandable that we're giddy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you guys and thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here at nine. Good Morning America is coming up next right here on KSAT 12. Have a good one.